Welcome back, everybody, to our second group stage match from Group A 3D Max against OOT. I'm LD. I'm joined here today by Paint Dota. Josh, what do you know about these teams? What can we expect to see? What do I know about these teams? 3D Max is Danish. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know that much about these teams, I think is the fair way to put it. But this, these are the two teams we don't expect to advance out of this group. 3D Max just got defeated by AL. For anyone who hasn't gotten the news yet, Josh was trolled. Apparently, Matrum is to blame for that one. Uh, yeah, he actually sent me a message saying that he w hoped I would do what I did. <laughs> like say it on a stream, go talk to people, and then they would be like, "What?" You you fell right yeah, into his trap. I gotta say, <laughs> I did. Oh boy, I forgot how much Swedes like to troll. Damn you, Matrum. Well, the good news though is we have the correct info for you now. So 3D Max out of Tango's both 0 and 1 of this group. Whoever wins this match has an outside shot, a very outside shot to advance out of the group. They would need to win their second match against either Absolute Legends or Navi, which. We never expected, but crazier things have happened in the past, so you can't rule it out. We got to focus on this match at hand now, and uh, not knowing too much about these teams, we are seeing, I think, very standard bands, especially in European Dota. The Templar Assassin, Batrider, Magnus, and Wisp, just the very, very strong solo mids, and of course, your Magnetar, bit of a jack of all trades. The Wisp, quite a pain in the butt. Uh, yeah, what are you thinking? We see the Dark Seer Jakiro combo again. It worked once against OOTK. OOT, rather. Can 3D Max make it work again? Yeah, out of Tango has just decided to get rid of that Wisp right away. I'd like to point that out. They aren't dealing with any more Wisp after that last game. But this is... Yeah, it's smart. It is smart in that sense. They just Clearly, they struggled a little bit against the hero, but at the same time, they're still dealing, dealing with that vacuum ice path combo. We saw... That is a very annoying combo. Uh, I don't know. Can they deal with it this yeah. game? Um, well, the key to like beating combo like that is uh, BKB heroes and getting BKBs. And Bounty Hunter is a great BKB hero. Quop's a good BKB hero as well. And she's mobile, so she can dodge a bit better than others. And we see a Shadow Demon pick up. I like this. This is one of the best heroes to shut down Darkseer in the lane as far as supports go. If he tries to surge away, you disrupt him. Later on, you can Demonic Purge that off. Uh, and it's it just, with Soul Catch, you have enough burst damage, depending on the hero in the lane, that you can actually bring Darkseer down, even before he hits level 2. And I gotta say, that was one thing OOT did right in that game 1. They really did a good job of shutting down the Darkseer. The problem came in that crazy Benny Hill-style chase, where he barely escaped. But I think with the Shadow Demon pick, they have uh, even a little bit more killing power than what we saw to the Rubik last game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, indeed. <laughs> yep, you summed it up pretty well, and we see a Rubik pickup from uh, 3D Max transition out of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's now at the banning phase. Um, I don't really know how these teams like to play, so. Well, as far as the drafts that we're seeing now, uh, it's a lot of team fight for 3D Max, pretty heavy in that respect, with Jakiro, Darkseer. Uh, as far as supports go, Jakiro probably the most team fight heavy support, I would say, uh, especially for hard supports in the game right now. Uh, Darkseer, uh, that, that's, you expect that to be your off lane? I, I guess it could be a solo mid Rubik. They do have the option to run him as a farmer, which I would love to see. I think farming Rubik generally leads to some pretty spectacular and exciting plays. So yeah, let's see. I guess that's the question. How are they going to land this Rubik? Yeah, I mean, farming Rubik, it's deemed, deemed a failure by many teams, but Navi pulled it off at the International. And uh, it hasn't been used much lately because the Fade Bolt, uh, the bounce, has actually been reduced uh, quite a bit. So it doesn't bounce the range heroes as much or the range creep as much. Yeah, and because of that, it's still it's pretty annoying, moves. though. But yeah, you're right. It is very noticeable. I think it was only a 10, 10 distance reduction. But it mm -hmm. still feels very, very much weakened from its older form. Yeah. And Rubik is a hero that has kind of... I don't want to say he's fallen out of popularity, but he's his priority has gone down a lot since uh, the new patch. Like we're seeing him picked up like third and fourth, even in uh, the highest level games, you know, and even sometimes not at all. Whereas before, he was considered uh, pretty much first or second pick guaranteed, you know. Right, like right. I, I would say sort of right after the international. That's what we saw because always Darkseer Naga Lycan were banned out. 
uh, by the team with second pick, and then Rubik was usually one of those heroes that the team with first pick was angling for, but what do you attribute this to? It was pretty slight nerfs to Rubik. I feel like you know the Fade Bolt bounce reduction, the slight decrease in move speed, these aren't really hero-killing nerfs. Do you think it's... I mean, why do you think this hero isn't picked up as much? Um, well, I think he's still just as good. Uh, teams just haven't tried him out as much, but uh, the fact of the matter is that THD came in, and THD is really powerful. Um, teams are also starting to experiment with uh, Keeper of the Light a lot more. And Keeper of the Light is also uh, really powerful as a support and fits the situation uh, a lot better sometimes than a hero like Rubik with the global teleport, the blast to defend towers, and the mana to hook up maybe a Chaos Knight with some extra mana because he's so lacking. Speaking of lacking, the, both of these teams lack a carry right now, and it seems like that is priority number one. That and just the very annoying team fight pushing specialist we see on Dying and Nigma get banned out, along with uh, the Faceless Void and the Sven. So this begs the question: Who's left? Who's left as far as those hard carries, those farmers go? Chaos Knight, you mentioned he's still available. Anyone else? Um, Chaos Knight's available. Shadow Fiend is a really good uh, hero in this pool. Luna is available. I'm not sure if these teams like to run Luna, but she's a great hero. Oh, I yeah. feel like Shadow Fiend at the moment is pretty underused in this version. I think he has a lot more use in him. Uh, his ultimate getting buffed and uh, all the buffs he's received prior to that, the extra souls, uh, and he's just a really powerful carry in this game right now. Yeah, he is, and, uh, you know, it's he's a little bit squishy, he's a little bit vulnerable, but especially if you're the Radiant, you can do those mid-pulls and always have someone like the Shadow Demon available to support him. Of course, with the Queen of Pain pick, OT probably going to go for that. Uh, Shadow Fiend or Luna, I feel like especially for 3D Max, these would just be devastating, because they already have tons of setup, tons of lockdown, you've got your Vacuum Ice Wall, which, particularly the Shadow Fiend, sets him up really well for the raises and for the big Requiem. I think that pick yeah. could work pretty well. Well, uh, well, 3D Max has what I like to call the strongest support combination uh, of Rubik and Jakiro right now. Uh, you can pretty much lane those two heroes with, I want to say, any other hero and any other, pretty much any other carry in general, and it can beat pretty much any. It can beat any lane in the safe lane, and it can go aggressive as well, depending on the carry you pick and do really well because uh, the two supports are just so powerful with telekinesis and fade bolt and then dual breath and ice path and then your third hero on top of it, it it's just so much damage from those supports it's a, it's a lot of damage and well it seems like OT does just doesn't want to fight head on they don't want to deal with the laning prowess of 3d max um, at least not in a larger scale engagement so they go for Marana this is She's gotten some slight buffs over the past couple of patches. Her arrow cooldown, I think that's the big one. It's been reduced yep. significantly down to, what is it, 18 seconds now? Uh, 17, 17. Yeah. Uh, but they're go this is like a, a very gank-heavy, kind of so single-target-heavy lineup. No real disables. I mean, arrow and disruption, that's it. Yeah, and I think they're going to be laning that as well, by the looks of things. Uh, I think they oh. were maybe looking for a Chen pick. They kind of need a jungler right now. And, uh, and who's left? Yeah, there's an there is an enigma. Hmm. Enchantress, I guess, but that's not. They're not really a lineup that wants to go for those early kills, right? Because they don't. They have Queen of Pain, Marana, Bounty Hunter. All these heroes need some levels. Aren't? You know, it's not like they have the Rubik or the Jakiro. Mm -hmm. So what do you think they do? Well, I think they wanted to get that Chen because they wanted to lane the Marana and Shadow Demon against the Darkseer. It's a great lane for killing Darkseer, and uh, it's just a great lane in general. And they wanted a jungle hero so that they could just maximize their XP gain. And uh, they didn't get it because 3D Max swiped it up. So they're kind of stuck right now. They're thinking about jungles and they're thinking about push, it, I would assume. Is it? They need, some, they need some tower pushing abilities. Is it possible they would try to try lane? I guess they have Marana Shadow Demon. You could get someone else. I don't know who that someone else would be. Uh, maybe yeah. they are. Because Queen of Pain, Bounty Hunter, we expect these two to solo. Uh, they did offensive pick up the Crystal Maiden. They could offensive try lane actually, but I don't really like that option here. Um, actually, they're going to be having a Rubik mid now that they picked up the Chen, and they're going to have a Jakiro in the safe lane with a carry. And that's so they could. That's a hard lane to dive, lane. right? Because you're just Ice Path alone. It's it's basic, mm -hmm. basically Fissure. 
I mean, not quite, but it's pretty close. It is. Yeah, it's very close. But, like, uh, out of Tango's, they kind of messed up their pick with the Crystal Maiden. Uh, they didn't want the Crystal Maiden. They have, okay, this is what I call the two useless support syndrome. Uh, when you have a Shadow Demon and a Crystal Maiden, those heroes don't really uh, contribute that much, and they have low health, and uh, they just don't contribute much. So you, you generally want to stick to like one of them. Like a Shadow Shaman, he can contribute a Hex. I would have much rather seen a Rasta picked up instead of a Crystal Maiden right there, uh, because it would give them plus tower push, and Hex is always useful. Fork is always useful, and overall the hero is much more useful outside of the early laning phase than a Crystal Maiden would be. Right, no, it makes perfect sense. So I guess the one thing they have going for them is you can Frostbite Chen creeps, and at least in the early levels, it's pretty annoying for the Chen, but it's just not going to scale nearly as well. They're going to be relying quite heavily on hero kills this game, I feel. On the side of OOT, we do have the team that, well, got worked by Na'Vi by that solo mid, Dendi, Wisp. Saiso reprising his role in the Queen of Pain. Frigo Leet on the Shadow Demon this time around. Flox Plox will be that off lane in the three position again. I love that name. Uh, he's on the Bounty Hunter. Cedar handling the Marana. Looks like the hard carry for this squad. And and Steph style playing, well, that, that Starcross pick that you mentioned, the Crystal Maiden. Yeah. And on the Dire side, we have Hayak, the captain, playing THD. We have uh, Noah, Noaya on the Brown playing the Juggernaut. Uh, we have Hawaii OO on Chen. We have 3D Max Ace on Darkseer. And we have Hester Rotten on Rubik. Hester Joe Rotten. That's a, that's a pretty Hester cool Joe name, Rotten. actually. <laughs> I don't know. That's just how I'm pronouncing it. No idea if that one's correct. Uh, it looks like the Dyer the did. I think. Begins. I want to say that I saw Sentry Wards here earlier. I think the Chen has them. He does. And they have a good lane to kill Bounty Hunter with Ice Path. Blade Fury, and then Chen coming in with any kind of creep. Fox Pox, maybe not going to die at level 1, but could die quite early on. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be difficult to kill him overall, I think, because it, it's going to be hard to kill him with the THD, just the Ice Path. Uh, like, they, they need, like, a secondary uh, stun or slow. Like, a, a net creep would be fantastic. A Minotaur... Or a centaur would be great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing you can do is this offlane bounty hunter. We've seen a lot of players like to go gank mid early, but your other option is just go mess with the Chen's jungle, and he's not going to kill you by himself. Uh, you're probably not stopping the Juggernaut from farming. Certainly not now with the sentries placed in lane. Twin Headed Dragon has those. Uh, Fox Pox is getting a little bit of experience. Not going to slow down this Juggernaut. And this was the one pick. This was sort of our last choice for OOT. I don't know about this choice. I feel to some extent Shadow Demon really counters Juggernaut. Demonic Purge is super annoying versus him, but uh, he, they do have a lot of nukes, and, and he is magic immune for a large chunk of his action in, in team fights. Yeah. I'm just watching this Crystal Maiden kill a Ursa Warrior way back. Efficient jungling. Hero, <laughs> hero Crystal Maiden. This is, this is something you can do, but you, know, you and I talked about it on Much Ado About Dota. You do have the mid-pull option. They're not choosing to use it. Yeah, I mean, it's a matter of whether or not you've practiced it. It's not so easy to pull off without practice, so. Hmm. Well, she is getting some creeps. Crystal Maiden can actually jungle. It's just not that fast, but with Frostbite, uh, you can kill them off. It does last forever and do a lot of damage to the jungle creeps. Level yeah, 2, and Dar not doing too bad. Darkseer was having a horrible time bottom. He got gone on at level 1. He couldn't even get in the creep wave, so he just abandoned the lane and went to the jungle. Yeah, it's a smart adjustment, and of course, it's the versatility of Dark Seer. You know what? What are they really gonna do if he goes into the jungle? It's the offlane bounty hunter. He's not really the best pressure hero. Oh, Flox Plox gets caught because his Shadow Walk is able to get on out of there, but not having a good time. Bounty Hunter struggling, and he doesn't really have the plan B of a hero like Dark Seer. He can't easily uh, rotate over into the jungle, but he's still getting more experience. I feel like 3D Max should be doing a better job. Of keeping him out of lane. Oh, he's past gonna hit. Now Blade Fury. This could be our first blood, but Juggernaut doesn't quite follow him. Will it be enough? He's dropping low. He's got to get out of Sentry Ward range. He won't be able to do so. First blood claimed by 3D Max. Mm -hmm. But if this uh, Bounty Hunter respawns fast and gets a TP scroll, he's going to be soaking up a lot of XP top. And it's almost worth it. 
The off lane is a tricky situation because sometimes it's worth it if the lane pushes and you get like two waves of experience. It can really help you out. Yeah, he's already level think... three. He's keeping up. Juggernaut's only four. He's not even that far behind, despite the kill. Mm hmm. So, like, he's in a much better position lane wise right now. Right, they do have the option to pull the lane back. The, obviously, on the dire side, you've got two ways you can do that. It looks like they're starting to, but to some extent, the damage is already done. Now that he's level three, uh, he's got at least one point every skill. He's got some decent burst damage. Has gone for Shriek and Toss early on. Going for a little bit more burst, which, when you've Shadow Demon, can be a good way to go. They have Soul Catcher. Crystal Maiden has started the mud pulls, and this is where... This is where the shenanigans begin, although getting the second level of pull is extremely difficult. Like you said, it requires a lot of practice. Yeah. I was just watching. He must have missed it. The small camp is missing. Yeah, he did pull the, just... the small camp, but didn't get the, the second pull. Ah, uh, unfortunate. Hmm. Gank attempt on the middle lane. Bounty Hunter probably going to go invis again before he pops out of here. Queen of Pain's level 4, Rubik's level 4, Shadow Strike being thrown out. This is, this is a potential kill for OT. If Rubik gets too far away from the tower, oh, he's got to be careful. Here comes Bounty Hunter, and <laughs> Hester just... Hester, Hester Joe Rotten. Man, that name is so hard to pronounce. Yeah. Uh, they were thinking that he, he was going to go for the rune top, and that's why Quap just beelined it up there with the creep wave on her. But... He didn't go for the rune, which was strange, and it actually saved its life. Oh, maybe not, though, because there's a DD rune and Flox Plox is here. But with this huge creep wave, not yeah, really the best time creeps. to go in. That's a lot of creeps. It's like two full waves attack. there. Yep. And out of Tango is just pressuring bottom a bit. DS is going to soak up a lot of XP because of this, and that's that's a relief for him. Yeah, both, both teams not really doing the best job of controlling the creep equilibrium, giving... Both off lanes more experience than you would like to see. They did a nice job early, but since then, Rana is level 5, has the reign of Akila, not rushing anything like a hand of Midas, which sometimes you'll see players do when they have that abandoned safe lane farm. Juggernaut, what has he gone for? Face boots, so. Uh, Crystal Maiden will TP in top. Yeah, just can't do enough to stop this push. She is no keeper of the light. Yeah, I think this push is going to be halted, though. Because, uh,. 3D Max, they actually needed to go behind the creep wave and just take it down. Wow, Queen of Pain dies solo to the Rubik. Looks like she was tower diving him, trying to pick up the kill. Rubik hits 6 off of this. And that's where life gets tough, because now she can he can steal that level 3 scream or blink. And you don't want to be giving either of those away. In fact, she even used her ult and failed to get the kill. Hmm. Maybe uh, the level 1 of no field 5% magic resist by level 7 threw her off. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of a preference thing. Some players like to go for more points in Telekinesis. Some at least get a point or two in Nullfield early on. Tele telekinesis is pretty damn good even at level one. Yeah, it is. There's not the biggest, uh, like, change with the spell. It's only 0.5 seconds. Yeah, 0.5 seconds. And then oh, that's not good. It's 0.25 seconds. Well, Rubik's What's got not? a Sonic Wave now. So this is probably oh, a dead point. Crystal Maiden. If she doesn't run, then she will do so immediately. Yeah. Bottom lane now pushing far into the tower. Ace, level 5, Sol Ring picked up. Is getting some decent levels. Quite a pain, almost dropping mid. If that's a Scream stolen instead of Sonic Wave, that's probably a kill because just a lot easier to get it off. Doesn't have that big wind up. I think Rubik has the wind up, right? With with Sonic Wave? Or no? Mm, no wind no, up? No, Rubik doesn't have one. He, oh, right, he cast on. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's, it, it, it's a reduction in cast time, big right. time. Well, it's enough that maybe he could be going for this kill, but he's just content to control the lane right now, just harassing her back. Yeah, this is makes sense. Quite hard. Quite hard for this Queen of Pain now. He's going to surprise her with Sonic Wave and Fade Bolt right here, probably, if he sees her. Mm, if she comes in, which she's not choosing to do just yet. Oh, she's thinking about it, and he is too, but Crystal Maiden is here. And it looks like just both teams trading right now. It is the Dire getting ahead. You expect that with the Chen and the Darkseer. Just better flash farmers in the jungle than what OOT can do with the cheeky mid pulls. And Goldwise lead by about 2k. Oh, Bounty Hunter. Narrowly going to dodge an Ice Path mid or top. Will survive. I still, I, I don't know. OOT, like when, when do they start to go for kills? They have a Bounty Hunter. They don't have a great team fight. 
It seems like on paper that unless they can just farm forever, they're gonna have to at some point try and find some track kills. Yeah, and I mean, I think Bounty Hunter getting his track up is pretty crucial to them. Uh, but they don't really, like I said, they lack push because of the Crystal Maiden. Like, if they just picked up a Shadow Shaman, got a fast six by just double pulling with them, giving them all that experience, the then they could fallen. have six by now and maybe push the tower. But Shadow Demon, Crystal Maiden, and Potom don't really push the tower all that well because they don't have any innate tower pushing abilities. Yeah, even Starfall, it's just so expensive to cast for a hero like Potom that, or, or Murana that she really can't spam it. Marubic has joined the push top. They are very committed to getting this tier 2. While this is happening, Queen of Pain farming mid. Bottom lane, Darkseer trying to steal the Shadow Demon's farm. Top lane, it looks like we might have an engagement. Bounty Hunter is thinking about going in. Nova on 4 or 5, dropping everyone low. Rubik will drop to quite low HP as well. But with the Chen creeps, it's not like Bounty Hunter's happy ma helping matters either. As an offlaner, it just doesn't provide any anti-push. Yeah, this is something we actually consider to counter, and we did quite often. Uh, when we played against bounty hunters in Quantic, uh, whenever there was a bounty hunter as an offlane, we would just take the liberty of pushing two towers, because there's nothing a bounty hunter can do. As long as you keep the lane controlled very well, and he stays a low level, there's really nothing a bounty hunter can do right, uh, to stop his towers from be being taken. Oh, well, bottom lane, they pick up the kill on Darkseer. I'm guessing disruption into the arrow there with Soulcatcher. They, now they have access to Demonic Purge, and this is a kill I think they could just keep on getting it. Darkseer, it's just, this is a combo that it's one of the few combos that makes it really hard for him to stay in lane. It's such a reliable combo, and it's so much, did I say combo enough times there? Maybe I should say it once more. No. It's a lot of I, burst I, damage. I think you should take that to Wendy's. <laughs> get a combo number three. Uh, Spicy chicken. I like this from 3D Max, though. They get the two towers top, and they're not... They're not backing off to farm because then it can actually help out Bounty Hunter. Then he can start getting a lot of free experience top, but now they pressure mid, so they continue to punish the fact that, well, he's not really a contributor in these 5v5 clashes this early on. And yeah, and like I said... Very dead. Oh, boy. Well, Omni slashes down, but like I said, uh, OOT really needed a pusher instead of this Crystal Maiden, and I think they were relying on the Chen pick, but they didn't get it. It was swiped from underneath their feet. Yeah, the, their Halloween candy just got stolen from them, and, the, and that that's the gen, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sad. Poor kids. Sad Halloween. You know, you do all the work collecting the candy, and then your dad's like, I'm hungry, and takes it all for himself. But yeah, 3D Max is just, yeah, he's, they're taking all the candy, and they aren't giving any back. Yeah, spoken by the master of the candy, the Dire Tide defending champion. champion. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, this could be bad for Marana, potentially. If Telekinesis hits, I think she's just dead. But it yep. does have the ult. Do they have detection? No dust. So the ult might actually be enough to save her, depending on when it's used. Cedar's going to charge right into the entire enemy team, but Frigo Elite is actually here. Where are those tracks? Not yet. Arrow onto Hawaii. Oh, oh. Now Marana ult is used, but the damage already done. Shadow Demon is dead. Cedar trying to find an opening here. So is Flox Flox. Nice starfall. We'll pick him up. Marana leaping away. What does Rubik currently have? He's got a scream of pain, and he will pick off the bounty hunter. Now Stiff Style coming back in. Finally, Queen of Pain is going to join this fight as well. What can she accomplish? Marana looking for an arrow, and so far, pretty even trades. I think they got one track kill there. So, I gotta say, actually favors the Radiant. Yeah, great ult on Priestess of the Moon. I love seeing that early ultimate. Now that it's only 75 mana, I love seeing it in use. It's such a good skill. You can get it at level 6 and get ganks off easily, and it really doesn't take a toll on you at all anymore, which is fantastic. Right, it used to be, what, 250 mana? It was really expensive, and she yeah. couldn't support it. I'm pretty sure it was 175 at level 1, 250 at 2, oh, but mid 175. Hestager Rotten may have a really hard to pronounce name, but that's not going to save him here. Not this time. Hestager Rotten. <laughs> it's such a good name, though, I want to say it. Well, Darkseer could be in a bit of trouble. Ion Shell is scaring off Steph Style. Now gonna Frostbite. Where is that arrow? Creep! Oh. Hero creep for 3D Max. In fact, Ace might be able to find a kill on someone else. Meanwhile, middle lane, just an illusion, so no action there. Uh, Juggernaut's always got a Battle Fury, so Marana's opting for the early Asha. Juggernaut going for a more farm intensive build. Huh, this is 3D Max just wanting to sit back and head towards the mid game. Yeah, 3D Max getting the. Battle Fury on Juggernaut. That's a farm intensive build you were speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> I had to check it out myself. I wasn't sure. 
I just... Yeah, they're in, they're in a comfortable position because they've been pushing all the towers with, without uh, any response from out of tangos. Yeah, the question though is, can out of tangos find some track kills? Because that one track kill by itself stopped the ascension or, or the descent of the gold graph. It stabilized. It's still a big lead, about 5k gold advantage for 3D Max. And now, oh no, did he give away track? Okay, he gave away Shadow Walk. Oh, that's not good. Shadow Walk is one of the best skills for a Rubik to steal. It uh, makes ganking so easy. It would be worse to give away track, Rubik. but yeah, it's real annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh oh. They like got right another here. Uh oh. This could be bad, but it's also Hayek dropping low. Where's that ult from the Rubik? He's got, she's got a 15 charge one. We'll blink to the low ground. Now, the bounty hunter trying to hope it out of here. Nova on four. What a Nova. And Queen of Pain still looking for the ult. Will nail two. Can Rubik steal it back? No, has already stolen disruption. Now Juggernaut comes, explodes them, gets two kills, double kill. And what do you know? They are right next to the Roche pit. Meanwhile, the Darkseer finding a kill on the Shadow Demon. Happening all the way over in the Radiant Jungle. Totally separate engagement there. And Juggernaut only one point in Helio Ward, so I think if he had a max Helio Ward, they could just go Roche, but they do respawn very quickly on the side of OOT. Mm -hmm. and that fight went very well for 3D Max by the looks of it. Three, three kills for one death. Very nice. Well, it definitely helped that they had that Shadow Walked Rubik right next to the Twin Headed Dragon there. And the Tier 1 yep. on mid, so they could respond very quickly to that engagement. Ooh, and they want to defend this tower. Oh, Demonic Purge and Track both on the Juggernaut. Healy Ward is here. It's only level one. Ward will be picked off. Now the Blade Fury dropping. Flocks, blocks down. Now thrown up in the air and disrupted. Being kept alive. Nice play by the Shadow Demon. Will it be enough? He's still alive. He's still surviving. Now in comes Murata with the Yasha. Would like to see Agility Trench just for a little bit of extra damage. Nice Starfall. They bring down Twin Headed Dragon. The chase is on. And 3D Max forced to retreat. They get the one kill. Unfortunately, I don't think it was a track kill, but they do get a kill. And now the chase going the other way again. Frigo Elite once more. Hawaii OO has the mech up. And, and they want Hawaii wanna... OO. <laughs> Is that a TV show? Uh, it's, I think there's one like Hawaii 5 0 or something. Or 9 0. Oh, they surge in the Rupik, but he gets disrupted. And Soul Catcher, where's that arrow? It's on cooldown. Disruption was stolen. Now he is the other way, but he's still Soul Catcher and will explode. What a combo. So the much damage. The Shadow Demon is being such a pain in the butt. Purge used before Surge, and then the Surge comes in. Burning down one. Meanwhile, it's Chen who TPs away to safety. And now Ace going to TP away as well. They're fighting. Well, will he actually get away? He does. Juggernaut pushing that top lane. Yikes, they're fighting without the Juggernaut, and they're still trading reasonably well. Top tower is under yeah, attack. I don't know, I haven't been keeping tr track of the track kills. Well, the Gold Graph can answer that question for us. It's stable, but they also haven't gotten more towers, so I want to say they're, they've maybe gotten one or two, but it's not a whole lot. Yeah, 3D Max can pretty much look at Roshan any time now, because of their advantage. We have a drum pickup on Juggernaut. Ooh, and a nice... Stack. I was gonna say snack. <laughs> You're hungry. Rolls aren't off you? the tongue, aren't you, Josh. Uh, stack, snack. Stack of he snacks. Just feasted. He just feasted on a snack of a stack. The juggernaut is hungry for food. <laughs> he wants all the creeps. Uh, and they'll go. Oh, they'll see Shadow Demon. They'll see Queen of Pain as well. And then they'll back off. I have to say, both teams not really being the most efficient with their movements around the map. I think. That's especially OOT, just grouped up, but not really using this opportunity to gank. Then spread out, but not really farming that well either. Just seem a little discombobulated as far as what they want to do. And, well, the team with the... <laughs> I think sort of the more stable picks is going to benefit from that. 3D Max, a lot more defensive, a lot more survivable. They're going to have a pipe soon on the Starks here. And OOT doesn't really have that much physical damage. Murata as a carry, just she needs a lot of items to really hit hard. Yeah, and on top of that, like, OOT, you've been, you're speaking about, like, how they've been inefficient with their uh, moving around the map and map efficiency, but they don't really have much to do, but it looks like they're going to challenge this Roshan. They were spotted out by the Sentry Ward. Oh, Hester Joe Rotten, you are manly. <laughs> flox, flox, you are dead. He gets thrown back into a ton of nukes. No pipe, no mech on this OOT side. Now the chase on to Steph style. Where, oh, where is the vacuum? Noia, <laughs> Noia wants to, oh, there's the ult. Just Goodbye, Steph, so. Oh, I confused him with Darkseer because he, 
Oh, he had the iron shell on him, and it was hard to actually Our see Our two the favorite hero. players just died. Steph Style and Flox Flox. <laughs> uh, they do have some adorable names, I gotta say. But it's getting to be... This is just the death ball, and I don't know that OOT really have the response. Oh, great arrow. Great arrow. Hero Shot Wild, the wild kind of the death. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, boy. Mech is popped. The push will continue. The pipe's got to be on the way soon. In fact, it's done. I want to say they can they can go high ground, maybe get the tier two bottom first, but there's not a whole lot that OOT could do to stop that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else would you be waiting for? I guess you don't want to give away track kills, but you pretty much have everything I can think of. Yeah, OOT has kind of drafted themselves into a corner here. I mean, they're looking for kills because that's what they need. They're looking for towers, but they don't have any means to getting towers. And they let the deficit in the early game just grow when, uh, when they were uh, 3D Max was going around pushing towers. Of course, with track there is always hope. Uh, this oh is, yeah, we've seen this before. So can't count OT out. That is the one nice thing about their lineup. Will they at least get Hawaii? Oh, oh, the bounty hunter leading the way. The smoke not dispelled yet. Now it gets dispelled. Track on Hawaii. Oh, oh, arrow to fly will hit. What a nice arrow from Cedar. Second of the game that I've seen. Really impressive. The pipe gets used. Now the hand of God, they just can't bring down Hawaii. Oh, oh, finally, he will fall, but everything in the kitchen sink thrown at him first. Hayek in the back lines, tracked up, but still pretty survivable. And now the tornado trapping one, but sent. it looks like uh, Steph Style was able to get back to base in the end. Bounty Hunter. Fox Box. Oh no, Fox Box, get away. They don't have dust, they will escape. Meanwhile, Swift Medley. Away, Fox Box. Oh, Sysler just lost a third of his health to a single... Single crit from the Juggernaut, and is that now is. potential. <laughs> it's gonna have to be careful. They have a ward. Oh. He's fast, he's fast. Blink, blink, woman, oh my god. Talk about waiting until the last possible moment. 50 HP, meanwhile, on bottom lane, Frigo Elite will pay for his insolence. Should be brought down here in a matter of moment, matter of seconds, he will fall. Track onto Jakiro, oh, but no. not dead. Oh, they're not getting any track kills, and now the vacuum Radiant killing off Bounty Hunter. Oh, just not quite the coordination you need. They gotta get some track kills, and they're just not, not really finding that many. Uh oh, arrow flies in. Saiso gets thrown up in the air by Telekinesis. Now the Soul Catcher, which was stolen, used against him, and he is taking a lot of extra damage. Now, what has Rubik managed to get his pretty little hands on? It's a Star Storm. This is. I, this is a hero that doesn't care about the mana cost because he doesn't have the mana issues with the arcane boots. In comes Juggernaut. No ult. It has already been used, but Blade Fury and the zap from the Rubik. That's a lot of AoE. This Rubik solo mid is really working out beautifully and poised to take this tier too. Do they even stop here? Mech's cooling down. Pipe. Uh, where? Well, arrow's gonna hit. More on that later. Queen of Pain gets caught. Telekinesis is throwing her back. This is there just will like, not be more on that later. It's an assembly line. <laughs> oh, an arrow is stolen and used against the Queen of... Gets the Marana. Her own arrows turned against her. Now Ice Pad, throat frozen and brought down. Really nice Rubik play from Hesta Joe Rotten. And pretty much by himself is just setting up every single one of these kills. Yeah, Hesta Joe Rotten is just playing great. Great. I just wanted to say his name. <laughs> Hesta Joe Rotten. Hesta Joe Rotten, indeed. And the tower slowly being sieged. They don't have... Well, they have a decent creep army up. And now with the tornado being summoned, someone's got to deal with this tornado. It's just keeping everyone off the tower. Track on three or four, but what good is that? If you can't actually initiate, they don't have Marana. They will have the Marana. Oh, nope. Not, don't even have that. It's down for 30 seconds, by which point the rack should fall. Now, Shadow Demon, one by one, they just keep on walking in and getting picked off by this pesky Rubik. Now Steph style being driven back. Juggernaut going to work, still has- Oh no, has to do a run, got arrowed. Oh. He's taken down by Siso. Ooh, I'm surprised that didn't bounce, but the Juggernaut ult, not bouncing, just out of the acquisition range for that other hero. <laughs> the leap is enough to get him out in the end. They still get Rex though, despite the loss of their, of, of their good friend, Hesta Joe Rotten. The push continues, the pipe is back up, Cedar being brought down by the Blade Fury, has leap in five seconds, walks back into the Blade Fury, ay ay ay. Now Queen of Pain in trouble, blinks away, just uh, dodging, and now, oh. oh, execution from the Juggernaut, just cuts her head in half. Yep, she just shattered. She's not a cutie anymore, I'll tell you that. This Crystal Maiden, not going to be getting many dates. Yeah, she was in my top three before. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Equilibrium, by any chance? 
I have not seen the movie Equ Equilibrium. There's this amazing scene uh, near the end of the movie where this guy is basically invading like an evil fortress. It's kind of a dystopian type thing and well every every person he kills like he slices their heads and then like three seconds later half of the head just slides off and that's pretty much how I imagine that Crystal Maiden's death going. So. <laughs> there can be only one. Exactly. Only one half of a head. <laughs> <laughs> only one. Oh boy. Well, 3D Max, they get the Rex, up by over 15k gold, up by over 12k experience, oh, looking confusing. pretty solid, I gotta say. They have all the items in the world, they have a great composition to keep on pushing, and it looks like they're gonna start this off with a couple of kills. They want the Shadow Demon, charging his Darkseer, is gonna wait to use the Surge, but nice disruption, arrow to fly, isn't gonna combo properly. Now the Nova, trying to keep Frigo lead alive. Demonic Purge to remove that Surge, but it just doesn't matter. Steph style, Brain brought down, and when you're dying to a Blade Fury that quickly, that is big trouble, mister. Sai out, Sai so, blinks away, trying to live. Arrow is gonna miss. Flox Plox will be able to survive. Sai so as well. You can't throw this Queen of Pain back up on a hill, even if you could, it probably wouldn't matter. She'll just blink away, but she's a little bit trapped. Gotta blink out soon, not choosing to do so yet. Blinks up, smart retreat, the one way she could go. And 3D Max, I think, just stop fighting, stop chasing heroes, go push mid, and looks like they are going to finally do that. Arrow hits Twin-Headed Dragon. Great arrows from Cedar, but they just don't have the heroes, the position to go in after these arrows hit. They just sort of say, oh, that was a nice shot, and then sit back yeah. and wait for the duration of the stun to end. Well, we can shoot another arrow seven seconds earlier because it's the last patch. They do have Marana ult. I wonder if maybe they can use that to try and start this fight. Pipe was also used. Tornado in the thick of things, slowly moving forward. Uh, the vanguard for this squad. In comes Cedar with a backstab. I like how OT are trying to fight this, not grouping up, attacking from all angles. Arrow is going to hit, though, on Shadow Demon. And when these guys find an opening, they don't have to wait. They go right in. They just start killing you. Now onto Crystal Maiden, force stabbing the Juggernaut forward into that killing blow. Nice job from him. Cedar still in the back line, still no Marana ult. I really thought they might try to initiate the fight with that. They the have Marana ult has been casted. There you go. Well, that was a little anticlimactic. Yeah. Uh, Pipe is almost back up too. 15 seconds and two lanes of Rex down. It's looking, it's looking rather bleak for our friends in OOT. Unfortunately, they are not out of only out of tangos. They are out of life. GG's finally come out. It will be 3D Max who have an outside shot, a very outside shot, but nonetheless a shot to move out of this group. OOT, I believe, mathematically eliminated. Uh, maybe could tie for last place if AL lose two matches, but that's about it. And I don't really see that happening, so... OOT most likely done. Their run in the group stage is all but over. 3D Max... Go up against Navi next, so what a team to have to beat in order to secure a playoff spot, but... I believe in them. If they do it and AL lose their last match, then they have the tiebreaker, uh, or then they'll have the better record than AL, but I think if it comes to tiebreaker, it would be AL moving on, because they would both be 2-1. and one. So either way, 3D Max, they take a win here, OT, 0-2, not really at the funnest group stage for them. Nope. But every group stage was so hard at the Stream Max. So many good teams. Um, you know, this year I'm hoping for four friends plus Trilly to pull out of the group. Do you know who they are? Uh, yeah, I cast them last year. I haven't really seen them much since, or not last year, but uh, at Stream Max Summer. They're yeah, they're a decent. I team. met, I met them at Dream Max Summer. They were really nice guys, and uh, yeah, I felt bad for them. I felt bad when I beat them and shook their hand and stuff. Oh, good guy. Good guy, Josh Amos. Also known as Paint It Gold. You guys can follow him, support him. Twitter.com slash Paint Dota. Of course, I'm LD. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube.com slash LD Dota. All of the VODs from today will be up there. Guys, stay tuned. We do have one more match before Group A is a wrap, and that match will be OOT looking for their first win of this group. Their last match of the group playing against Absolute Legends. It's going to be tough. But I still have faith in these guys. I love their damn names. And, well, I'm going to be rooting for them at least to make it a competitive game. Anyway, guys, stay tuned. Another game, our final game of Group A coming up in, well, a little bit. It might be about 20, 25 minutes. We'll see. We'll let you know. Thanks for tuning in.